Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Linux Board of Selectmen meeting for Wednesday, September 22nd at 7 p.m. in Town Hall. Um, this is our regular meeting. I have a couple of announcements from the chair. First, I want to recognize um, the passing of Elliot Morse, who was the chairman of the Linux Finance Committee for a number of years, um, up until about this past year. Uh, he offered tremendous advice and support for um, Linux's financial status and um, always had a great perspective about what was going on in Linux. Um, he was also on the Master Plan Commission for three years and offered uh, really insightful contributions to the economic development chapters, um, to the services and facilities chapters um, that the uh, Master Plan Commission put together and just really put his heart and soul into it. He really cared a lot about the town of Lenox, um, the citizens, and um, in doing his best for the town. I, I know that he'll be missed for all of his contributions and um, we thank him for his caring service to everyone in the town. Um, next, I'd also like to thank the Chamber for their work on Art Walk this past weekend. Um, there were a number of vendors I noticed through social media on Instagram that were participating. Um, it seems like they all had a great time. Um, it looks like the, there were a lot of townspeople participating and it looked like everybody was pretty safe and socially distant from what I could see through my social media feed, and um, I really appreciate everyone's cooperation with the masking and the physical distancing during the course of Art Walk. So um, thanks to everyone for that. And now I'll entertain the acceptance of the minutes from September 10th. I'm not sure if we may introduce ourselves. Oh, thank we'll, you. We'll roll call ourselves first. Okay, we'll, we'll roll call ourselves first um, at the beginning of the meeting. Why do I never want to do that? <laughs> Ed, Ed Lane. Neil Maxmillian, present. Uh, Mary Beth Mitz, present. Lauren Archie, present. Thank you. Chris, can we get clarity that we still are required to do that sure. when we're in person? I will, make, I will double check that. Great, thanks. Uh, Dave Roach is not here tonight. Um, now I'll entertain acceptance of the minutes from September 10th. Madam Chair, I move to accept the minutes of September 10th. Second. Second, I'm sorry. Great, that's all right. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you very much. Our for usual that. secondaries. Yeah, Mr. yeah, tonight. first day. <laughs> so, um, Citizens Open Forum, is there anyone here who'd like to speak about any particular issue? Seeing none, um, we will move on to the consent agenda. So, for today's consent agenda for Wednesday, September 22nd, we have a donation acceptance from Police Chief O'Brien seeking permission to accept a monetary donation. We also have a donation acceptance from the Fire Chief O'Brien seeking permission to accept a monetary donation. We have an appointment. Uh, Darlene McCauley is seeking the appointment of Shannon O'Brien to the Community Center Board, replacing Stephen Kuhn until 2024. Can we put a hold on that? Sure. We have a change of manager, um, TWG Lennox Manager LLC, doing business as Seven Hills Inn, is seeking our approval for the change of manager to Kathleen Myers. And also, we have a one-day all-alcohol license and outdoor entertainment license for Seven Hills. They are seeking a one-day all-alcohol license for Saturday, September 25th from 3 to 11 p.m. for a wedding. Can I hold on that, please? Sure. Um, this license will cover the lawn in front of the Terrace House, an area which is not included in their annual liquor license premises. In addition, they would like permission to place a speaker outside on the veranda on Friday, September 24th from 3 to 9 p.m. during their welcome party. Also, they are looking to plan to have a DJ outside under a tent from 2.30 to 8 p.m. for a wedding. Um, and there have been additional emails um, regarding other events, but those will be coming to us at, a, at another time. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda without, with being aware of the holes? Yes. 
Uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, subject to the holds asked for. I'll second it. Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, okay, the hold on the community center appointment. I just wanted to, you know, welcome Shannon O'Brien uh, to the board or to the community center board and thank her for doing it. But I, obviously, she wants to put a lot of time in from her uh, the paper she wrote. But the main thing I wanted to do is uh, just uh, acknowledge Steve Kuhn. He was on there. I don't know how long, how, no idea how long he was on there, but he's not been on there a long time. He put a lot of effort into it over the years. So, you know, Steve's a good man and he put a lot of time and effort into it. So, thanks. Terrific. That's great. And um, Mr. Maximilian, you put a hold on Seven Hills. Yes. Um, when we discuss liquor license hours and uh, closing hours of liquor licenses in general, I just want to make sure this is consistent with it, and I'm assuming it is because they're smart people and they probably wouldn't have written something that wasn't. But I note that they're asking from 3 to 11. I, mm -hmm. I, don't, re I don't recall having made a specific you know, a modification to our bylaws, but three to 11 is a long time to keep the yeah. open bar. All right, yeah. so we, we um, when, when we reestablished our, our, our policy some time ago, we, we, we reset the, the end time limit. I believe, mm -hmm. I believe we set it at midnight. Um, we did with last yeah, call yeah, being 11. La, last yeah, call last being call 11. 11, yeah. 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 Um, so this would conform to that portion. However, I don't, I don't know that we dealt with duration. That's why I raised yeah. the issue. I, I yeah. know we discussed it. I think we did. Um, from the standpoint of, I think at the time we had requests for, before us that ended at midnight or one hmm. and started at something like you know, five or six, and we thought, geez, that's a long time. But, so mm -hmm. this is conforming, but I, I don't have any basis to argue against it. I just wanted to clarify. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it may uh, it may indeed be uh, something worth um, revisiting uh, in terms of duration. Um, perhaps not with this application. Right. Um, yep. No, your point is well taken. Yeah, and I is. think that's what we were trying to avoid with the prior cap mm -hmm. um, is duration. Um, so I think that's very valid, and um, we can certainly take it up at, a, at a, another meeting. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so moving on to general business. We have, um, to, we have to vote on this one. Oh, we have to move on this one. Okay, great. Uh, there, um, would anybody like to come and speak about the uh, Seven Hills, the licensing? I can introduce myself to you. Sure. Yeah. Come on up. Just up to the microphone? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank if you could you come up to the microphone and um, tell us your name. The, and the microphone's not for amplification, it's for Perfect. television. Gotcha. Yeah. So my name's Kathleen Myers. Everybody calls me Katie. I'm the new general manager over at Seven Hills. Um, and first time doing Selectman meetings. So very excited to be here and nice to meet you guys. We're Any questions Welcome. or anything? Well, I, I, I do think that uh, you heard the, uh, the the board's concern about yes. the du duration of the yes. of the event. You're what, you're within the hours limitation, which is great. Um, however, um, additional vigilance, uh, you know, uh, making full use of the the tip certification, the bartender, and the, and the training yep. that goes into that is, is something that we'll be looking for uh, attention to detail uh, for. And it may it may in fact any future applications may come post. Uh, review by the by the board of the overall policy. Okay. So just something to keep in the back of your mind as Absolutely. you plan future events. And when you guys do have a vote on something like that, where can I find information about that? I will distribute it. Okay. Um, yeah. Just want to make sure that we would be included in that Seven decision. Hills is certainly on that list of uh, of, of establishments along cool. with the mountain and other other folks who uh, right. make frequent use of the one day awesome. uh, permitting. Thank you. All the, right, guys. Thanks the, the so much. Best thing, the yeah. best thing is to keep a real good communication with Mary Ellen. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. she's, our, she she's been fantastic with and, all of my questions. <laughs> you know, a, lot, a lot of times thing com, things come in and it's like the 11th hour and we're trying to scramble, trying to figure out how to accommodate things. Right. So, um, yeah. You know, just as soon, you know, just talk to her a lot. 
Absolutely. Was, yeah. Yeah. She, I did ask a lot of questions and she, like I said, she was fantastic with getting right back to me and saying, you don't want to do it this way, do it this way. And I'm like, thank you so much for your help. So yeah, thank you for that. That's great. Thank you, Katie, well, for introducing yourself. Welcome, Katie. We really appreciate it. Okay. Fantastic. So if we can entertain a motion to um, approve those two held items. Uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the held item regarding the appointment to the Community Center Board of Shannon O'Brien and to approve the one-day all-alcohol license request from Seven Hills on Saturday, September 25th. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to general business. Um, tonight, uh, Katie O'Neill is going to give us a presentation and overview of the Lenox Library's strategic plan. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you. It's been a while since I've uh, been here uh, in front of you all. I'm Chris. Of course. Yes. Thank you. Parents, would you like, would you like one? Katie, would you like one since we're here? So uh, Mary Ellen was going to distribute a um, the full plan um, to you, but I created just a, a little bit of a cheat sheet with some of the highlights. Um, so we were due to renew our strategic plan last year and um, began that process pretty soon after I came on as director in December 2019. And then as you know, the world changed and um, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners is very kind to offer an extension to all of the libraries with expiring plans um, in 2020. So we had until um, October 1st of 2021 to complete. So at the beginning of this calendar year, we re-engaged our committee and started that process. Um, we have just gotten approval from the Mass Board of Library Commissioners about a week ago that um, we have successfully completed everything that's required. Um, so this, the plan is um, on file with the state, which makes us eligible for grant funding, um, like the one that Amy LeFay recently received for the archives. So that's a, a big bonus to having the plan. In addition to, it's something I really believe in. This is my third uh, strategic plan I've written for a library specifically. And it's great to have a roadmap and to have the data from the community and the input into what they really need and want from us. So just a few highlights. We did do, um, we had a committee um, that met and had two um, brainstorming uh, sessions. Uh, Mary Beth participated in that um, to get feedback from people um, within the community. And we also did a user survey that was available for about two months time. Um, we had 208 responses to the survey. I was really pleased with that. Um, so there's just a few highlights at the top here that's primarily from the survey. But 63% um, uh, of the users visited the library once or more and 27% visited at least once a week, which is wonderful. And I can tell you we've been closed for two days this week for tech upgrades and our hold shelves are overflowing. So we are, we are definitely getting used. And, so, and borrowing books is still the number one reason that people come to the library. But um, social aspects, visiting, um, coming to programs, volunteering, account for three quarters of respondents' visits, which is almost a, an on par with book borrowing. So that's a really um, important component of the services that we provide. And also the use of the physical space, um, including the reading park, also very popular. 98% um, of respondents rated library customer service as excellent or good and staff were the top name asset of the library. So I think as a town, as municipal employees, we can be really proud of our staff and the tremendous customer service that they provide. Um, there's a quote here, the warm and welcoming faces of the librarians who are always there to make connections and bridge you to new worlds. Um, so as a library staff member, really nice to see that. And 95% gave the library overall an excellent or good rating. So we're, we're meeting the community's needs. Um, there are a few quotes here from users that say, the library is the heart of Lenox, a year-round space where everyone is welcome and a vital part of the Lenox community. And this one I thought was really touching. The only venue that cares about the things that are important to me and my neighbors. Um, so we're, we're making impact and that's really important. Um, in terms of what they would like to see coming from the library, um, you can see here the top five services most important for the library to offer interlibrary loan, assistance from librarians, services for children, access to computers and Wi-Fi, and local history collections and programs. Um, this really dovetailed with a lot of the conversation and brainstorming that we had in the, in the sessions as well. 
Um, and then there's some program topics of interest there you'll see. Certain themes emerged out of the data that we received, um, and these four words kept occurring over and over. Community, connection, communication, and culture. And we really see the library as sort of sitting at the intersection of those words and those values, and they really inform our work on a day-to-day -day basis, which um, helped us sculpt our updated mission statement. The mission of the Lennox Library is to connect our community to resources and programs that encourage lifelong learning and celebrate our collective history and culture. You can see our goals. Um, there are many action items that come under each of the goals. Uh, if you look at the full strategic plan, which is also available on our website if you don't want to print it out because it is about 30 pages. <laughs> um, and so continuing to offer a wide array of engaging high quality programs for all ages maintain collections and resources that support lifelong learning in the community, improve access to and promotion of the local history collection, which with the appointment of Amy as local history librarian when I came on board has really gained a lot of speed and she has a fantastic Moving Lennox program coming up the first weekend in October and was just discovering new things. Literally right before I left, she ran into my office and was telling me new information that she's discovered. Um, providing a welcoming, comfortable community space where individuals can connect with one another and to the resources they need and enjoy. We're really also um, gonna take that to heart for our teens in the community. Um, that was a really big component that came up in our discussions that we have the community center for our younger youth, but the teens kind of age out and we want them to have a space to go where they feel welcome and comfortable. And um, Jenny Malloy, our youth librarian, has been doing a tremendous job engaging youth. We have so many teen volunteers. We formed a team advisory group, and it's been great. So we really look um, forward to building upon that. And then the last is kind of a business one, but ensure that the library has the appropriate policies, staffing, and infrastructure in place to deliver high quality services to the public. So our IT upgrades is part of that. Um, you can see the committee list here. Just really thankful to everyone who participated, um, most of whom are Lennox residents. Deb Cody, Kay Cuthbertson, Andrea Fox, Alexis Brown Kennedy, uh, Amy Lithaven, Jenny Malloy, and myself from staff. Brendan Matthews, Darlene McCauley from the Community Center, Mary Beth, um, Jen Nacht from the Chamber, and Danielle Stern um, from the LLA board. Um, and those are some people that also helped us um, with facilitation of the plan. So that is uh, hopefully a brief overview, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about the plan or anything else that's going on at the library. I just I think it's really fantastic because I think that your um, your outreach to the community also helped you guys come to the new policy that you put in place with new hours so it can be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night until 7 to help the high school students and um, that there are no more fines at the library should you return <laughs> a late book which is probably you know you might lose a little bit in, in finances but I think you're going to make up with, with goodwill in the community and it'll help people to not feel bad that they've actually had that book under their bed for two months and they'll bring it back. <laughs> Absolutely. Those are just, you know, two examples of right. things that we've already hit the ground running um, with uh, input from, from this process. And um, so we have our action plan. We will submit an action plan December 1st to the Mass Board of Library Commissioners. We submit that each year. So we have our, our goals for the, for the coming year. Um, and as a last bit, I would just invite all of you to participate with us a week from tonight at 5.30. We are um, sponsoring a Rise Together walk um, in support of Elizabeth Freeman Center. Um, and Mary Beth will be joining us as a Captain Smitty will be joining us. Um, and that'll take off in Retreating Park at 5.30. So I just like to make a plug. Um, we will be safe and social distance and masked, but it would be great to see um, some turnout from the town for that event. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Katie. Thanks for this presentation. It's, um, it was really enjoyable to go through this strategic planning process. They can be a little dry sometimes, but even over Zoom, the facilitator made it engaging, and, um, and it, uh, you've come up with a, a really useful, um, you know, not gathering dust on the shelf plan, which is, which is terrific. This is a living document. I know a lot of people say that, but it, it's nice to have that input, that feedback.
to underscore the work that we're doing and these are actions that we'll, you'll see take place and so I look forward to giving you updates as we go through the plan. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So I, oh. Go ahead. No, you go, go ahead. First, okay. okay. Um, first I'd like to comment or, or compliment is the word I was looking for you and the rest of the folks involved on the effort here. This is a very well done plan. The questions asked seem to be very appropriate. Uh, I would be more than thrilled if strategic plans all came with a two-page summary that's comprehensive <laughs> you, and, you all, and, and all, all inclusive. So, you know, it reflects your expertise. It reflects the hard work of everyone involved. So kudos to all of you. Uh, and then my only question really is, um, some of the critical uh, offerings of the library, which <laughs> coincide with the goals, I'm curious how they've been affected by distancing and sanitary policies, like if we up our interlibrary loaning of books. I don't know how that works, where the sure. books get sanitized somehow. Sure, there was... Um, um, use of computers, you absolutely. know, the things where there's obvious touch points. Right, so, um, yeah, I mean, we just had, like, so many of us have had to pivot and think um, outside the box a little bit about how we continue to offer these types of services in a COVID environment. So with technology, you know, we added um, last summer when we knew we were going to be closed to the public, we added um, a wireless access, uh, access point that pointed out to the reading park. We upped our um, fiber speed because we're on the mass uh, broadband initiative, so we have fiber internet at the library. We upped it to our maximum speed. We upgraded all of our wireless access points so that if people were in the library or outside the library, they'd be able to access. Um, there was actually a national level study done, um, the Institute of Museum and Library Services um, conducted materials testing on how long the COVID uh, virus lived on various types of library materials. Thankfully, not too long. So at first we were quarantining materials. We just leave them in the gallery for a couple days. Um, and then it was determined that 24 hours was more than adequate. Um, so, which is really just overnight in most cases. Mm -hmm. um, We've socially distanced um, computers, so we don't have as many, but most people are taking advantage of the Wi-Fi, and there's still enough um, physical computers for people to use. Um, programs have um, shifted to Zoom. Um, we had three programs, in-person programs scheduled for September, and so the new directive switched all to Zoom. Um, one was wonderfully attended. We had 100 people um, for Hannah Wool, a, uh, a Lennox native. That was last week, um, and then we had our first Distinguished Lecture Series uh, last Sunday with Mark Oppenheimer, that's uh, coordinated by Jeremy Yudkin. And then next week we have another Alex author, uh, Marilyn House, who will be talking. So we've just tried to keep moving and keep doing as much as we can. Um, like everyone else, it certainly impacted. Um, the biggest thing was the hours. Um, you know, the survey came in a time where we had just kind of gone back to full services. So a lot of the comments were, bring back hours, bring back, you know, everything in the library, um, sort of at the beginning of the process. And, and we were, we just had to do it in line with health guidelines. So um, I think we've done our best to really keep everyone safe. That's extremely important to us. Um, all of our staff willingly and happily got vaccinated I didn't, you know, that was not a conversation I had to have with anyone. Everyone says, Katie, I'm going to get my vaccine this day. So um, I think in that capacity, everyone's been really vigilant and doing their best to, to provide service. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, so I agree with Neil. I mean, this is one of the, the best strategic plans I think I've seen <laughs> in a long, long time. It was really a Good. fantastic job. It really truly really was. And it made me... You know, it, it, it's funny because about 30 years ago, I probably said, or sometime, what in the world's a library going to do? How are they going to survive? What are they going to be like in years from now? This is the kind of stuff it's going to be like, and something I never would have dreamt of. But uh, you know, thank God that that's what's happening. You know, so it's a really good job. And one other point I wanted to make, and I noticed in the, on the I read the strategic plan and the pie chart of the age of the of the respondents. The 13 to 17 year old, I think it was, there was like one response. Mm -hmm. And that's what I liked about this. You're aiming to that group to do some work with them. 
to get them involved. So absolutely, anyway, Jenny has just been a tremendous asset in that regard. Um, and she knew um, Alexis Kennedy at the high school previously, uh, just as a patron. So having that connection has been really helpful. And um, we had um, the superintendent when he arrived asked to meet with us, and we had a wonderful conversation with Mark. Um, so I feel really great about our potential to build on our relationship with the schools and offer more services in concert with them for students. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about where this plan is going to lead us. Um, and you know, librarians are very adaptable creatures <laughs> by trade. So um, you know, we'll keep evolving and keep pivoting and keep inventing uh, as is necessary. Thank you so much. Kay. Thank you very much. It's great when we have a town department that comes and shows us, not just us, but can show the public what is going on on a day-to-day -day basis and how you're moving forward and you know, doing things for the entire community at, at every level, at every age level. So thank you so much. Katie, solid plan and uh, very nice presentation. Thank you. Great. Um, I'm going to move on to S Board of Selectmen Liaison Reports. I got nothing. You got nothing? Okay. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I just want to take this, take this time to um, veer off the path a little bit and acknowledge Elliot Morse as well and the times that I've spent with him working on uh, what he was working on with the FinCom and the just undeniable depth that he went into all of his analyses and out of pure care for the town. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to acknowledge that. I also wanted to acknowledge the Art Walk as I, I was there um, in person. I thought it looked well run, well distanced, not overcrowded despite there being no parking spaces available. So to me it seemed like it was well done. And then finally, I want to acknowledge Patty and the modifications that she made to the Josh. From all accounts that I've heard, the Josh was enjoyable by the participants, um, albeit you know at half half size compared to normal, but um, seemed to go off well. People did not seem to get you know the gathering didn't happen, which was the big goal, and um, you know many people that participated told me they thought it. You know, they missed that, but they thought it went fine. So how will they distribute the mugs this year? Oh, everybody, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they've already done it. They, they've done that, yeah. Oh, good, good, good for them. them. That's great. That's great. Well, um, I don't have anything except that I'm <coughs> really happy that Katie got to come and present the uh, strategic plan for the library. Um, things appear to be running very well here at Town Hall with people masking indoors and you know doing their best to provide services and do it in a safe manner. Um, it's fantastic. Um, and thank you for the report on the apple squeeze. I was out of town this weekend, so I appreciate you know your report on that. Art walk. Art walk. Thank you. Art walk. <laughs> apple right. squeeze. I'm very confused. Um, Warren. Uh, just a minor item on uh, my tree warden responsibilities. Uh, Patty Spector and Bill Gopp and I will be putting out little notices, little signs by the trees. Patty was concerned that not enough people know what species of trees we planted. And over the years, um, I've been involved with DPW in planting about 250 trees going back 15, 20 years. And so we'll have little signs saying what they are, because there's apparently a lot of curiosity in that issue, uh, item that I didn't know about. And uh, they won't be around all of them, but at, as we change species and uh, put in different species, we'll have a little signs, so people can. I unfortunately think the signs may disappear from time to time, but we hope <laughs> We hope they'll stay right where they are and be informative. So that's all on that. That's great. Um, it's funny that you should say that. I had some relatives in from out of town a couple of weeks ago, and they were they were like, I, I know what a, a maple tree is, but I don't know what some of these other ones are. And there seem to be quite a few. So 
naming those out as poplars or birches, that'll be very helpful. Yeah, yeah. A lot of lindens. Right? I'm sorry? A lot of lindens. Yes. Mm. Now what, what, the lindens and the red maples mm. are fortunately two species that could be planted roadside and not be damaged by road salt. Uh, that, that's not true of evergreens, and it's not true of a number of other species. So there's been a big emphasis on that. The, the rule of thumb for, the, for arborists is not planting more than 15% of the same species. So you don't get the situation we have like in Pittsfield, where that beautiful row of rows of, of elms on South Street were decimated, and they all went. Mm -hmm. and if you remember, and I do, back in the 60s and 70s, that was a beautiful street because of that, and it's changed substantially now. Anyway, so we're identifying trees. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, now we're going to um, move into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to negotiations with non-union personnel specifically the town manager, and we will not be returning to public session. Uh, and this will require a roll call vote. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to move to executive session to discuss strategy with respect to negotiations with non-union personnel, town manager, and note that we will not be returning to this room. I'll second it. Emily and I. Neil Maxwell and I. Mary Beth Mintz, I. Lauren Archie, I. Great. Thank you. Okay. That passes, and we will not be returning to public session. Thank you, and our next regular meeting will be Wednesday, October 6th at 7 p.m.